everybody. Uh, we are going to record a live episode of Podcast from the Printverse. Uh, more specifically, the Printer Chat podcast. Podcast. We are in the Learning Lounge. If you're interested in joining us, now would be the time. Um, but my name is Deborah Korn. I am the Intergalactic Ambassador to the Printiverse. I run a company called Print Media Center. I provide print inspiration and resources to print marketing professionals around the world. I also host a podcast called Podcast from the Printiverse. It is currently listened to in 146 countries. It has more than 250,000 downloads. I like to say for Beyonce, that's a Tuesday, but it makes me the Beyonce of print. Um, one of the uh, my favorite podcast series that I do on podcasts from the Printiverse is called Printer Chat. And I invited two of my favorite printers to join me as co-hosts. We have William Crabtree. He is the owner of Tampa Media, which comprises Tampa Printer. So, uh, Sign Parrot. I know Sign Parrot. Shirts 818. 813 Shirts. 813. That's the one I always forget. Area code 813. 813 Shirts and Gorilla Consultants. And he also has a uh, digital marketing firm, which will um, you know, have some interesting announcements, hopefully, at the end of the year about um, how Will might be able to help some of the printers out there in the world. And Jamie McLennan, who is the GM of DMR Graphics, powered by Invoke, out of uh, the Philadelphia area. And Will is actually in Tampa, Tampa Printer, Tampa Media. Let's start off by uh, letting everybody know a little bit about your work out of Orlando. Will, let's start with you. Uh, well, I've been in the printing industry for going on 20 years now. I, I was a, uh, a DJ and a rave promoter in the late 90s and the early 1000s. I passed out a, uh, a lot of flyers. And then that turned into, uh, I became a broker. I was working for a software company. Uh, I sold websites to printers. And part of my job was to learn how to market those websites so that I could teach the people that I was selling the websites to. And it wasn't long that I made more money all selling business cards off of my marketing website or my broker's website than I was working for the software company. So I left the software company and I opened a small retail shop, uh, 1200 square feet, me, one guy, one printer. Uh, now I, I co-own two buildings, multiple businesses, 40 employees with my wife, Ashley, who's going to join us a little later. Um, and uh, always learning and always trying to, to, to expand and, and do more stuff, which is why I'm really excited to be at the show. And we've already seen a lot of inspiring things and uh, very excited to, to implement those when I get home. Excellent. And, um, you know, when you bought the sign shop, I have was already, you know, friends with you and everything. Mm -hmm. So I have learned so much about the sign business from your trials and tribulations and your victories and your losses and your frustrations. And <laughs> I mean, uh, it's really been enlightening. I, I'm coming from the commercial print side. I, I, I mean, technically, uh, I used to work in an advertising uh, as a print production person, I would just supply files and be like, where's my sign, you know? And uh, so it's, I think it's really important to, that everybody understands, especially the end users, what is, goes into it. You know, when Jamie tells us the stories of he goes to install a sign and the electric from 14 years ago is still in there, uh, you know, very fr frustrating for everybody. So I'm glad when we're having more dialogues about signage. Jamie, why don't you tell everybody about your work at DMR Graphics, powered by Invo. I am Jamie McLennan, Jamie the Printer. Uh, I have been in the printing industry since 1985, started running Heidelberg Presses and uh, small presses, built that into turning into sales, and now running uh, our DMR division in Conshohocken, in Pennsylvania. Uh, DMR is powered by Invoke. Our, we have two plants, Cranberry, New Jersey is Invoke, Cut Sheet Digital, uh, offset printing, direct mail, DMRs, POP, signage, large format. So we do a lot of different things in that location. So uh, the signage world, like Will, when he bought a sign company, I thought it was amazing. We had bought a sign company in 2020 and solely has been growing that part of the division, uh, mostly ADA, hospital signage, uh, outdoor signage for buildings and stuff like that. Not too many monument signs, the big stuff that I'm seeing here in the show, but uh, we do a little bit of that. So. It's fun coming here, seeing that, seeing how, what other things we can grow into. 
And uh, yeah, it's been a great show so far. Yeah. Lots of new things. Uh, usually as a media person, I'm running around the show by myself, you know, talking to people, have making appointments, press appointments and things of that nature. But yesterday I actually got to walk the show with Jamie the Printer and I learned so much more because, you know, nobody talks technical to me at, at the booths because they know I have no idea what they're talking about. Uh, so a couple of times I would stop and I'd say, hold on, I need Jamie to interpret for me what, what you're saying. Yeah. But um, we saw a lot of cool things. And since we um, were actually at the show just a few hours more than you will, I'm going to start with Jamie the printer. Okay. Um, what did you see on the show floor um, that um, is interesting to you as far as uh, your business and looking uh, forward? Uh, well, let me start here. The first thing I really liked about coming to the show and, and doing these types of shows are uh, I like to stop by the booths that where we bought uh, equipment from. Our suppliers, there's a bunch of our suppliers here. That community has been very helpful to our company. We have good relationships with our suppliers, with our manufacturers, and just being in the booths yesterday, getting there, whether it was just coincidental, good timing, but uh, a couple booths, we just uh, hit it off. Other customers were there. You get to talk with other printers and actually customers because we uh, got, I got probably two or three leads from one, one of our friends over at Swiss Q yesterday for doing some pretty cool stuff that we'll talk, talk about in the trends section. But that was, that's what I like coming to these shows for. It's the, the, the people that you get to see you, you don't get to see them all the time, um, but you get to create those uh, relationships with your suppliers and your, and the, and the equipment manufacturers. So building on that, we did uh, stop by a lot of booths yesterday, a lot of great printing equipment out there. Uh, we are looking at laser cutting to expand our areas and that some of the POP we do and signage in our facility. So uh, I was looking at maybe three companies and probably there's more than 10 companies here that have lasers. So that was really incredible. Got to talk to some great people, learn a lot of new things, but I didn't know. So they were very helpful. And uh, yeah, everybody was up front. Everything you asked about what it is, you know, you guys are in Texas, we're in Philadelphia, no problem. Here's the price installed, ready to go. No haggling, no nothing. So it was pretty cool. Yeah. One of the things that uh, I didn't even know existed until yesterday was that water laser cutter thing. Yes. Did yeah, water to, jet. Yeah, water jet, water oh, and sand go through cool. like this entire building. What, what booth is that? I gotta see. Oh, that. I know. I guess they're over there somewhere. It's, it's amazing. crazy. Okay. It's like it reminded me of the movie Aliens, where the like the the acid drips through all okay. of the yeah. floors. <laughs> yeah, don't <laughs> like, cut through anything. Like it was we can't very turn cool. This on. Yeah. I want one. Yeah, yeah. It's, I mean, you see the and I want one. It was really. I was like, what? It was really, it was really enlightening. And I, so, but you know, cause I thought it was a laser cutter because uh, we were looking for that. Okay. You came in towards the afternoon yeah, and you were, you, you were on a mission. You were looking for something specific, but as uh, we actually did an episode of our podcast from your uh, print shop yesterday. Yep. And uh, we talked about how you like to do shows, which is almost like if you think about like you go to a city and you go on a double decker bus and you see the whole city and then you can decide whether what you want to go back and see later on. That's how Will runs through a trade show. Yeah. So what were you able to see in those three or four hours that you were literally tearing through these aisles last night? Well, it, it, my experience yesterday was a little different than the way I normally do shows because I, I again, I, I'm here with my lovely wife, Ashley, and, and she's more of a planner than I am. So uh, she had some spots that she specifically wanted to see. So we hit those. and We, we actually still covered a lot of ground in a short we amount did. of time. We saw a lot of stuff. Um, the, 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 one of the, some of the things that I'm really excited about that I'm seeing a lot of are the new EMCs. So the technology behind those, uh, the uh, electronic message center, so the LED screens. Um, the, the, the technology behind those has advanced so much that like it, it's a TV screen, like from any distance it is, yeah. it's high res. It, so, it looks amazing. Gee, you know, and the way they're put together now is so much more yeah. simple and easy. So I'm, I'm excited about those. Uh, the, uh, I've, I've been on a mission to, to, to find different types of hardware. So, uh, I'm, I'm not on an equipment mission. I'm stacked on, on equipment right now. Um, but looking at like different types of extrusions. So we, we were doing a lot of signed rehab. Uh, and, and there it's, it's a really good niche for us to be able to, you know, bring a, a sign back to life 
So looking for like the soft signage conversion systems uh, or the uh, even like the, the protrusions or the extrusions to be able to make uh, uh, soft signage for indoors to light things up. Uh, so I saw a lot of that stuff that was really cool. And then uh, always looking for little tools to make people's lives easier. So uh, when I see something that takes a lot of time uh, on my floor, I'm always trying to think of a way to, to, to solve that or to make it go faster. So I saw a really cool tool called the, uh, the Glue Easy, which was like a pen that you could run across acrylic and it like glues immediately instead of that little squirt bottle with the needle that the guys are on the, you know, trying to put the trim cap on. Uh, so that was really cool. And then all the suppliers. So I'm, I'm always uh, in, engaged and intrigued by the different materials that are coming out. And uh, there was, uh, I, got a, I got a piece of mail yesterday uh, before I left. So it showed up yesterday, right before I left. And, and luckily I still had not left so that I received it. Maybe they should have mailed it a little sooner. Um, but it was the, uh, the Economy Sign Supply, which now they're, they're, they're located in, uh, in Florida. They're opening a facility here in, in Orlando. I think this is their oh, really? grand opening thing is being at this event. Okay. Yeah. And uh, the, the mailer was amazing. It was an invitation. It came on this acrylic plaque. And I knew that I had to go and see them. So I saw their booth. They were great and uh, excited to, to, to potentially start working with them. So uh, Excellent. It's, it's been, been very productive in a short amount of time already. So I'm you excited were. for the day. You were very productive. <laughs> Going back to that glue thing with the uh, thing, both of us were at the booth. Yeah. They're like, we'll buy one now. He's like, I don't have any. He's like, I already I'm sold like, out. I was like, we're ready. We'll take it with us. Uh, that was okay. cool. We on, on our conversation we had about, you know, before how we, you know, work before, during, and after a trade show, what the research we do, what we do at the show, how we follow up after. Um, one of the things that we identified is a, is a, a great reason to attend a, a trade show is discovery. And that's exactly what happened. You actually found a useful tool that's going to save you time, money, and right. hassle. And I learned that you can basically drill through cement with water and sand. So <laughs> it just depends on where you're coming from. But um, certainly, um, I like to look at trade shows and try to understand where is everybody going? You know, what are the things that they're showing that gives me an idea of the vision of the company or what they think the vision of the industry is? or what they think the vision of the needs of their cost of the printers customers will be. And I have, uh, I I'll say I've created my own trends that I believe I've seen here, but I'll chime in last. Well, let's start with you. I know you only had a short time yesterday. You'll probably get more information today, but in your time running through yesterday, what did you kind of gather? So I, I, I think one of the biggest trends that I've seen at the show is that almost every booth, whether it's equipment, material, or, or otherwise tools, is there's vehicles being wrapped all over the show. And all, not every booth, but in a lot of the booths, there's vehicles being wrapped, which is, is exciting to me. I've, I've been learning vehicle wrap. That was a new part of my business when I bought the sign shop that I had stayed away from uh, previously. Um, so it's, it's interesting to see that the color changes versus just print, right? I think that's something that's kind of new this year. Can you just define what you mean by color change in case people don't so know? Color change is taking the color of a car and changing it with a colored film, right? So instead of painting it, you would wrap it. Um, where I think previously there was, it was more heavy on the print side of, of advertising and, and commercial wraps versus the color wraps that are happening all over the place, which is a huge, huge market. It opens up a cons the consumer yeah. market. Yeah, if you're if you're printing and, and installing wraps, then you're it, it's a little bit of a learning curve. Your installer should be able to do color change. So if it's something that you're not doing already, it's definitely something that you should be doing. And obviously, we see it with the trends that you know it's 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 happening throughout the industry. So it's definitely something that you should adopt. We um I wasn't looking for it, but now that you've mentioned it, um, there's certainly tons of substrate vendors here in film and things like that going to start looking if I see those metallics and those solid uh, because most of the time we see we see the that color change on really fancy cars yeah and um, I mean there was one that somebody pointed out to me on a Lamborghini I didn't believe it wasn't painted um, I've seen work you do from your from your sign shop where you're actually doing like a matte black and then uh -huh. some gloss on top of it yeah which looks really really <laughs> cool so I love that people are skewing more to auto decoration right. than just signage on a car, which still, by the way, is a fantastic, if you 
you own a retail business or you 100%. deliver and you don't have freaking graphics on your vehicles, I don't know what, what to say to you. Like, like, open up your eyes and, and go find a printer and to help you. Yeah, I didn't see nearly enough graphics on the vehicles out in the parking lot as, as I came in. There should be much, much more. If you're in the printing industry or the sign industry and you don't have graphics on your car, you yeah. are missing an opportunity. Okay, I'm sure. also going to point out that there's a lot of people in here without business cards, but that's a whole other thing. Hey, I have business cards today. <laughs> okay, thank you. Um, okay, Jamie, what, uh, Will, anything else uh, trendy uh, ones for you? Well, the, one other thing is, and it's kind of in the same vein, is, is more of like the textile type of films, uh, getting into more of like architectural decoration. Uh, again, yeah. kind of getting away from the printing side of things, but using the same tools and the resources that we have available, the people that do printed install on a wall can install textile. So you could decorate offices and add these as extra embellishments and extra services when you're selling or, or, or pitching a sign to somebody. Yeah, um, I saw that too with uh, not just vinyl, but there was a company out there, I believe called Chem Metal. They were making thin metal sheets that were put on walls as decorative textures, different stuff yeah. like that. It was very cool. And they had wood and metal. So it was kind of neat. So different avenue going in that way. And Demence has the, had the, like, that's that, part of the that thing we're going to bring up. Yeah. Felty thing. I mean, it was so soft. We were putting it on our face. Even the fabric, the, the adhesive fabric on the entrance. Did you see that as you're coming through? Yeah. It's self adhesive fabric. That whole wall is covered with that. That stuff is awesome. Oh, I yeah. didn't know that was Yeah, fabric. we use that a lot. It's fabric. Fabric. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it can okay. be pulled down and There's so many things you can do with that outside of just putting it on a wall, too. Sure. That makes total yeah. sense because there was this guy standing out this morning and he was like touching everything. And I was like, <laughs> What is he marrying the wall? I was like, what is he marrying the wall graphic? What is this guy doing? It was a little, it was a little crazy. Those fabric um, graphics are great for going over like vinyl walls for like professional sports and minor league sports. When they go to the playoffs, you add their their graphics to the to the inside of the dugouts and stuff. Yeah. So yeah, very cool. Okay, Jamie, the printer. I was with you yesterday. So what sort of trends were you seeing on the show floor? Uh, one of the big trends I saw with the suppliers, with a number of them here, uh, a lot of uh, environmentally, um, however you want to call it, eco-friendly materials. Uh, most of the signage I've noticed in here is all being able to be thrown away. It's all paper-based. Uh, we have a lot of customers. That's all they're looking for right now. So I came here looking for recycled plastics but uh, and other types of papers, and uh, I've seen that in a number of booths. So that was really cool. Uh, found a couple of suppliers from uh, Ireland. That was kind of neat that I didn't even know existed. Uh, uh, some friends over here in a booth over here at 3A. Uh, they have some really cool thing called Swede board, which is a dimensional thick, uh, like honeycomb type material and a polar board that you can do uh, displays that you can actually walk on and uh, build the platforms oh, and stuff. Yeah. yeah, so that was kind of cool. But I've noticed that in a couple different places. Uh, that was really cool. And then uh, in the printing world, in the different printing booths that we've been in, uh, it's slowly been coming along. Um, Swiss Q started it a couple of years ago with textured 3D printing. So you can take a, a artist put painting, have a 3D scan and actually paint, print it so it looks like it's brush stroke. Amazing. Wow. And I've seen other companies starting to do the same. They're offering their white, their clear inks and white so they can build up the ink to create these different textures. I see that trend building and building. I know in our shop, we have a lot of interest in it and people are asking for us. We're getting referrals for that all the time. And then uh, the lenticular thing we saw, you know, um, I'm bringing up my, one of my favorite from companies Muto. again. Uh, yeah, Muto had it, which was kind of interesting. They did it on a solid substrate where you could kind of look at it, kind of like, kind of say the Cracker Jack thing from when you were a kid, like that kind of lenticular. And then some of the other ones were on acrylics where it kind of builds a depth and a, the, the clear ink gives it a lens. So that some of the trends I see, which I think are exciting. Uh, I know we have some exciting customers about it and they're looking for the right fits to add this to their, uh, to their business world. So um, those are some of the things I saw. Um, I, as a recovering print customer from an advertising agency, <laughs> I uh, walk down the aisles with the looking completely differently at everything because uh, sorry, everybody, but I'm not going to buy any equipment in here. You know, uh, I, I, I don't have a print shop uh, or a sign shop. So um, I look more at, do I have a clear understanding of what these companies do and how they claim that they can help printers do something or add something to their business? Are their samples adequately representing 
what they want to represent about their products and the way they print or the way the uh, ink lays down on a certain subject. Um, and I have to say that for all of the talk about sustainability that is going on here, I don't see the messaging on the signage on the boots. I don't, I don't see a lot of, um, you know, maybe people don't want to reinvest in their trade show boots, but, um, the times have changed and, um, there are definitely printers walking around this trade show. Jamie, the printer was one of them specifically looking for, um, more sustainable substrates, uh, to use and only a few, I only found one boot that literally had it plastered up there. Everybody else, we, we had to dig in too long. And I guess what I'm saying is that if you're just walking by, you're going to continue walking. So my, I would say a trend here is to, after this show, go back with your team, look at what you're trying to say and make sure that that's clearly communicated. Um, regarding the samples, I don't know if people are printing them on the show floor. I don't know um, if they are just want to have things to have things at a trade show. But for me, the way I look at those samples is a direct reflection of the equipment or the process or the whatever it is they're trying to show me. And if those samples are not as close to pristine as possible, for me, that's a problem. Right. I start questioning the technology. I was told that maybe I should question the operator's skill, and I would like to just preface that a lot of times at a trade show, it's not an operator actually on the machine. It's an engineer or a technical person. Or a salesperson. Or, or a sales I mean, who, who, whatever. I mean, they're, they're, um, I'm just saying that pay more attention to that. It matters. So um, when you go back from this show or any show, have a plan, have a person whose job it is, is to make sure that the samples are the way that they want to be, whether you're shipping them in or talk to the person who's printing them on the show floor, um, and just make sure that you're showing off the best that you can be. Uh, the last thing I want to talk about is a really cool trend that I noticed, which is using really big, wide-format flatbeds to print Many, 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 many little things, and they cut them out with the what's the CNC's. The CNC's. Yes, yeah. I call it the cutty thing. They they tell me it's called CNC's. <laughs> um, the CNC's or the lasers, or if you dare, the water sand killer thing. Um, but incredible, um, almost strategy about yeah, that. Run. You know. Uh, yeah, I can make you an eight foot sign or I can make you 300 little buttons. Um, and there's some really cool acrylic samples mm -hmm. um, that I see a whole new opportunity to almost enter the premiums. I call them premiums. Um, what do you call the promotional items space? I loved the decals, um, all the transfers that people were putting on like seekers and things like that. And I start thinking about like working out things with high schools and uh, camps like kids go to or um, even um, going into like some of these booths where they have 30, 40 employees with, um, you know, a place where a lot of employees are. Universities, you know? prep schools. Exactly. You can print all their things that their students will take and put on their notebooks. Yes. And computers. you can sell them. Yeah. I mean, just like you sell, um, you know, they sell photos of children, you know, mm -hmm. your school photos. You can add to it. You could put stuff, start putting stuff in college bookstores. I know you can't just walk into a college and say, I want to do something like that. But some of people out here are already printing for universities. So it's just another conversation to have, or it's a way to talk to somebody about, look, I don't want to talk to you about your signage. I know you have that covered. I want to talk to you about something you're not doing. So that's just a way to have a new conversation. So that's what I took away from um, yesterday. We're actually going to have a drop-in right now. Um, and we've mentioned Ashley a few times. So this is Ashley Crabtree. She is a first-generation family-owned business owner. She is Will's wife, as he, uh, he mentioned. She uh, works at the print shop uh, in a management position, 
And I am proud to say this is her first trade show. Yeah. And we wanted to get um, a newbie perspective on everything. So just tell us about your trade show experience. Oh, uh, well, it, I wasn't expecting it to be this big, to be honest with you. I'm like, wow. Like the sign industry and printing in general is huge. It's massive. Right? Um, but I was really blown away by the technology, like so many cool machines, um, so much new technology that I've never seen. Um, and just learning all about that, watching the big printers print different things, the laser cutters, all the LED things that you can do and like how that has changed so much from like even what I've seen as a consumer. So that was really cool. That's really exciting because that's something that we can offer as our company. And um, it was interesting just talking to everybody and getting to learn about the machines because I don't always dig into that part of it. Honestly, I'm more administration and management stuff. Um, so that was cool to see how those machines operate so I can better talk to even like our own employees, but also customers about things that we offer. So that was really cool. I also liked, you know, you can stop by all of our vendors, things like, you know, you were saying, Jamie, that's cool. Like I recognize all those names, um, deal with all those POs and things like that. So I'm like, oh, okay, like, yes, I know you. We order a lot of stuff from you. <laughs> um, yes. So that was really exciting to kind of see all the people in person and not just the name, right? Because a lot of times I only see the name. I'm like, yes, I know you. I know what you offer. I know what you sell. But that kind of, you know, personal relationships and seeing those people in person for the first time. You also made um, one of the best discoveries, that flexible um, yeah. electronic sign. Those, yeah, the LED signs. Those were super cool. I was like, never seen anything like that in my life. It's like a giant Coke can. It's somewhere yes. in the middle of the show. It's, that. it's an LED giant can. So they've got flexible yeah. magnetic LED uh, EMC. Yeah, like if you could put that on the back of a wall and just have it like a TV, that would be amazing. We're yeah. going to do it. We're going to make like, a giant TV at the show. It's definitely <laughs> like an eye catcher because everybody that walks by is like, what is that thing? Like, yeah. never seen anything like it. I, I'm definitely going to look for it, but based just on the videos that uh, you took of it yesterday. Mm -hmm. um, so you, uh, Will said that you had some, some things in mind that you wanted to see at the yes. show. Uh, I, again, I know you only had a few hours yesterday and you're mm -hmm. going to spend the time today. Did you get, were you able to get any of that done yeah, yesterday? Yeah, I did. And uh, you want to share more about that? Yeah. So um, I was really interested in the whole rap experience because we do a lot of raps. That's something that we do. I thought it was really cool to see like all the competitions, um, even like the sign competition. So cool. It like gets people involved. It's something different. So you're not just like walking around looking for vendors. It kind of like you can see how things work. You can see the material. All of those things are super helpful when you're looking for things to buy and seeing them in action. Um, that was really amazing. Love that. Um, I also wanted to see the sign agent, that program that they had, and they mentioned it on email. They kind of like email blast. And I was like, oh, I really want to go see that. Saw them yesterday. That looked like super cool technology and software that can kind of help sign makers from like the conception part all the way into installation, which is really cool. And I don't think necessary. Yeah. And I don't think there's a whole lot of software out there. Um, that's what I would like to see more of is more software. Honestly, there's not a whole lot of software out there. Start developing software, better <laughs> software people. Um, it is out there. It just doesn't do what you need it to do. Correct. Right. You, but you have to like use to like 10 pieces of, of software. Right. Yeah. yeah. It's a, like it has to be a Frankenstein thing. Yeah. Right. And that's what really we have seen. Like two things. So I would like to see more software here. I think that's super helpful. Programs that can help people solve problems. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's super helpful. Um, so yeah, but it was really cool to see all those things. I thought the emails they sent out were really helpful because it highlighted different businesses, their booth numbers and things that you might be interested in seeing which is helpful if you've never been here before. Yeah. So I liked that, that they did that. Excellent. Um, you know, I was thinking about you yesterday when I was sitting right next door in the hub, uh, which is ISA's um, area where they're 
uh, have all the regional organizations and, and associations that people might not know of in their area that new sign people can yeah. tap into. I mean, even if it's just getting some online education for your installers or for a graphic artist. Uh, I know you, you have a, a lot of graphic artists in your business that help create the, the, the work for people. But, um, you know, I think that that's a, a really valuable um, area. And I just, I wanted to mention it to you and the yeah. sitting right next to it. So it enabled me to, to remember. Um, is there anything else you want to say about uh, your experience so far at the show? It's been great. I loved it. Having a lot of fun. Um, yeah. I think the organization and the time it took to put this together, you can definitely tell they spent a lot of time and energy and money to make this happen. So they did a great job. Um, yeah, had a lot of fun. I'm looking forward to seeing other things and going back to other booths that were like, didn't have time to see really and like talk to those people, see what they really do. So looking forward to doing that today. Excellent. Um so you're more than welcome to stay here if you'd like. Uh, it's up to you. Okay. Um, so we're going to talk now about what happens next, yes? Yeah, I think so. Um, oh, bye, Ashley. <laughs> um, so what I mean by that is we had a really interesting conversation that I think is worth repeating on this, on this episode of the podcast, which is... Um, what happens when a trade show ends and right. how much following up do the manufacturers, I mean, the exhibitors who are scanning badges actually do with people? And what is that type of follow up? Um, we have, all right, so why don't we talk about, we'll lay the foundation of previous experiences mm -hmm. and then we'll talk about what we hope will happen here. So let's start with you. Previous experience. Previous experience. Um, I, well, uh, and I'm, I'm a weird duck when it comes to trade shows. I, I, I hide my badge. I try to avoid being scanned. I, I try to avoid being talked to as much as I can uh, unless I'm really interested in something. If I, if I have questions and I want to talk to somebody, I'll engage. But like, I'm the guy that's trying to dodge the sales reps in the middle of the aisle that are trying to rope you into their booth. Um, but, uh, no, if, if I'm really interested in something, I, I let people scan my badge because I want the information. Um, and, and I want to learn more. And, and I think what, what really happens and where, where it falls short is that you get an email, right? And, and it usually kind of ends there. You don't have someone calling you. You don't get any mail. You don't get really much from most people. There, there are vendors that, that do a really good job with this. But there's other vendors that you just you literally get one email and then it's done, right? You don't have any more engagement unless you chase them, right? And I'm not a chaser, so unless I really, really want something, but I'll figure it out on my own, right? Um, one of the things that I think that, that we fall short on is a lot of the things here you can't buy from the manufacturer. You have to go through a distributor. So, but they don't tell you who the distributor is, or they don't tell you who the local sales rep is, and they don't connect the dots for you. So you come and you see all this amazing stuff and you see so much in a short amount of time that some of it gets lost in your brain, right? Especially if you're really busy and you run businesses and you've got a lot of things going on. Uh, so I, I think that there's a very big missed opportunity in follow-up marketing and, and how you continue to engage with the people that you interact with at these shows. Agree, Jamie. Past experience. Past experience is pretty much the same as Will said. Um, I usually don't try and hide from the people in the booth, but I don't like getting roped into a booth that I don't have any interest in. But when I'm there, I'm like, yes, scan my badge. And if it's somebody I really want them to get back to me, I'm like, here's my card because we're interested in this. Here's our time frame: three months, six months, sometime in the next year. This is something on our list that we need. And more times than not, it's a couple blanket emails, nothing personal, nothing like, hey, I saw you at the booth. Please get back to me. That's rare, you know, once or twice. Uh, but that's what's needed. Follow up, especially if I've been like, yes, yeah, scan my badge. Here's my card. I am interested. Phone call, follow up, send an email. I'm going to call you at this time. Uh, and as we said before, especially if you're at some of these, uh, booth, especially the suppliers booths, like materials, vinyls and stuff like that, send the samples. Yes. We want to see samples. samples. We want to touch samples. We want that in our hand. Say, hey, I remember you were at a booth. I know you were looking at this. 
here's a sample pack or here's something you're interested in, send it to me and then follow up because that's the only way I'm going to get back to you because like Will said, we're busy, we're running around, we're selling to people, we're running the business, you know, we're not sitting there waiting for the phone call. Right. So, yeah. So that's the best way to get back in touch with me. But far, time, far too many times you're not. So that's just one way. And now everybody hearing this will call next week. <laughs> yeah. Uh, spread it out. My phone's going to be blowing up. Don't call three <laughs> days after the show. Give it a week or two and then call. I mean, it, I think it's so important that we talk about this because, you know, the, um, the industry is in, in a flux, right? There are less printing businesses. This is a fact. Yes. There are less people on planet Earth who think print first. It's a fact. It doesn't mean that print is not a viable medium or communication channel or sales tool or educational tool. That has nothing to do with it. Right. There's just less people using it. And that means that there's more pressure on printers to find customers and there's more pressure on exhibitors to find printers as customers. And there's more pressure on trade shows to attract printers if they say, I went to this trade show and I scanned all these badges and nothing happened, right? What I've been learning more and more talking to printers after the show is who's actually not doing something at that point? I mean, you came here, you allowed your badge to be scanned, you had conversations with people, you told them you were interested, and you get a generic, thanks for visiting our booth. If you have any questions, visit our website and contact us through the contact page which essentially puts you through the entire experience you had in the booth again, or to your point, you're not even talking to the right person because you need a distributor. So there's got to be more skin in the game with the, manif with the exhibitors, um, in my personal opinion. And I agree with you, Jamie. You know, there used to be a time where if you gave somebody a business card and you walked into a booth, they'd write something on the back of it so they remembered what they talked to you about or something. And you did, you did say in the HP booth it was a little more... Um, yes, they actually scanned my badge and it had like a little questionnaire. And they were like, what are you interested in? Why do you like this? When would you like me to get back to you? How would you like me to get back to you? What's the time frame? And just a couple other questions. And it was pretty interesting. Because that's the first person... Did they ask you where you there. lived? Like, uh, they asked where we were, where the company so was. So they were going to send the right person to you to find out. And the, it was actually the person that was in that territory. They came okay. over and said, I'm in that territory. Okay. So that was good. So, but yeah, a lot more questions than just a scan. So that was it. So that's that's another way of doing it. They're pre they're they're pre sorting, right? Mm -hmm. So they're getting the information up front, then they'll disseminate it to the right people. Everyone else is gonna have to weed through that stuff and I don't know and they're gonna get the blanket email. So I just think there has to be more more skin in the game. Okay. From this show, what are your plans as far as um following up or what you, you hope is going to happen? Well, I'm just saying, Jamie had some, I was with Jamie, and he had some really serious, what I would categorize as buying conversations. Oh, yeah, no, for sure. Uh, There's definitely not, stuff not that like I'm looking. buying from this show. Okay. I, you know, I, 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 I was on, I'm I under supervision right now because I buy stuff at shows that I probably shouldn't buy. But there's Jamie uh, and I have experienced that, by the way. Where are I you? I bought Will? a lot of equipment at shows. I'm not in, buying any equipment at this point. I just bought um, something in IL3. I'll be, I'll be over it later. But uh, no, I mean, there's there's a lot of that that glue thing. I'm definitely going to buy that. The the affordability of that is 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 insane, and and the amount of time that that'll save is is ridiculous. Oh, and I just um, want to say, you want it, so you don't care what you have to do. You yeah, really I'm, I'm going to find if that guy doesn't call, get, doesn't get back to me, I will find that yes. guy. And I am going to I buy scan the thing, discount right? code. I'm yeah, I, I got the the show special, right? Um, you know, so. Uh, oh yeah, I want to mention that too. Yeah, we'll, we'll we'll talk about the show special. We'll, we'll, why don't we go ahead and talk about it now while we're while we're on the subject? Yes, please. So, uh, what what? And, and I assume most of people that are at the show know this, but for people that may be watching this that are not at the show or have never attended the show, there almost everybody has a show special, right? But that doesn't necessarily mean that you have to pay or buy at the show to get the show special. Most of them will carry it for a month and even a, even a month or two after the show takes place. Uh, so you're 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 not under necessarily pressure to to make your purchase here, but you know you can you can still take advantage of those discounts in in most cases. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, I I I'm definitely going to invest more in the EMC side of things. We have 
one on our sign shop building uh, that we inherited that's really old. I'd like to replace that. I had a conversation with one of the vendors about potentially having that replaced by them and them giving us a discount so that we have really? like a showpiece on our building to upsell. You know, I'm really big on on making things and, and having things to be able to show customers because that's the easiest way to get them to buy stuff. Again, why we need samples, send us samples as much as possible. Anybody that you interact with, if you make a thing or you have a thing, send samples to the people that are at the show that you interacted with so that we can show those to customers and customers will buy them and then we buy them from you. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Jamie? Sorry, I'm lost in his tangent there. So. <laughs> oh, we're talking about uh, following Follow, follow up, how follow up. So what are you going to follow up on? What do you hope that yes. you're being followed up uh, with? And what are you, uh, you know, thinking about? Well, I had some good conversations. So I'm hoping those people will follow up. I gave them time frames. I'm like, I'm not looking for next week or next month. I have certain needs. It's in the next year. This is what the direction we're looking to go. And, you know, I will be doing more research on the couple pieces that I really liked to see if they really fit us. And then I will probably do, if I don't hear from them, I will make that phone call first just to say, hey, you know, I've, I've looked at this. This was your, and talking about the show specials, what I found uh, really helpful this year is that most of the uh, vendors had the price right out there, right out front. You yes. know, on the yes. top of the machine or you just ask the question, I'm like, what is the price? It's $15,000, it's $20,000 installed, ready to go. I'm like, I'm in Philadelphia, you're in Texas. It's like, not a big deal. We also have a service center in New Jersey, 20 miles away from you, that'll service you. So I'm like, that's a big help. Great. So that, I thought the transparency was great. So, so yeah, so those ones that I had good conversations with, I'm hoping I hear back from. If not, I will probably reach out to them once I've done a little bit more um, research. And then uh, we'll see how long that show special lasts. Excellent. Um, we also, uh, we had a little pre-podcast meeting last night uh, where we talked about uh, things, you know, looking at the show. Yeah. And uh, some things that go on about that. Um, and one of the things um, we talked about was hoping that the show organizers, all show organizers, not just the International Sign Association, but all of them, start thinking more user experience. Um, yes. Meaning that printers have limited times out of their print shops now. It's way different than it had been in the past. And it would be much more user-friendly for like items to at least be in the same rows versus, I understand companies don't want to be right next to each other necessarily and hear conversations, okay, but all the software could be in row 300. It could be spread out, but at least you know you, that's where you, you go for that. Um, and things of things that, that are easily groupable, um, I understand why why they do it to encourage people to walk around, and the people who want to walk around are going to walk around, but the people who really need to um, do their research, have their conversations, and maybe they only have one day, and maybe they only have a few hours right. in one day, especially if they're local to any venue, try to make it easier for them. Even if you color code the boots uh, on the map so you know that everything blue is software, everything yellow is a cutting device or some matter just to try to make it a little bit easier for you. And you mentioned something else that we want to talk about, but now I forgot what it was. But I agree with that. So that helps because, I mean, I think we probably walked eight miles yesterday. Yeah. And <laughs> talk, talk about that from a printer perspective, even though you had time to do it. I had time to do it yesterday. But, yeah, like you said, I zigzagged back and forth across the thing. You know, we tried to go up and down every aisle, see things. But I'm like, no, I have a list of people that I want to see today and that I want to get an overview of what they have. And then usually the second day you kind of fine tune on what you got to do. I'm like, I need to go back and see these three different people, but they're in three different corners. So it's kind of be easier if they're within two rows of each other. So that would make it a lot easier. But uh, I think that would help the serious people that are looking for it. Like you said, yeah, I, I see. I think uh, we'll have the Walmart mentality. You want to go check the whole store out. That way we're, we're going to buy more. Um, right. And so, but I, I think it'd be much more easier if things were, you know, in this corner here was all equipment. Over here was all materials. So, yeah, that would definitely help. Yeah, and there's obviously people that have more than 
one thing and they may qualify. Okay, right. put them all in a little area too. Like everything, a oh, one-stop shopping more is there. And that's actually, um, a, a, I don't mean to digress for a moment, but that was another trend that I noticed on the show floor is that um, if you look at it as that in the last three years, printers have geared up with equipment, right? Mm -hmm. Now they're looking more in the finishing areas. Now they're looking more in the software areas, right? Um, oh, God, I lost my train of thought on the during the live podcast here. <laughs> uh, what was I saying about trends? Trends where we saw, we talked to some of the manufacturers that their equipment's faster than it has oh, been. Oh, yeah, thank you. But then the cutting equipment is still the same speed. So okay, the backups that. are in the, the cutting department rather than in the printing department. You're printing faster than you have before. So looking, printers are looking for ways to stop that log jam in their CNC department, their cutting department, you know, adding another piece of equipment or finding a faster piece of equipment. So that that those speeds need to kind of match right. to keep things flowing well. Okay, and then the thing that I remembered was that I keep uh, what I was seeing is that the manufacturers are like well like uh, the equi the vendors I always call the manufacturers I should not the exhibitors the exhibitors who assumed that most people had presses already were like what else can we what else is out there that you might be doing. And for example, we were in the Roland booth and we saw some really interesting add-ons to print like directly on Stanley cups and yet cups and not etching, but literal printing. And if you think about like what goes with signage events, you know, and what else can we do for events? So uh, you can make t-shirt, they have a small little, very affordable uh, t-shirt press there. So it's um, back to your point, also, Will, um, I loved that pricing was out in yes. the open in the show. Love it, it was so such a relief. Yeah. To not get the how much does it cost? Well, you know, it depends. And you guys were getting straight answers. Yeah, from you people. ask and they tell you straight up. That's great. Love it. It saves so much time on everybody's. <laughs> And, you know, the ma the exhibitors don't have to necessarily spend time with someone who's that might not be in their price range. Right. Um, it also gives printers who, who equipment is not in their price range what they know that they need to save up for, what they the goals, need yeah. to get it. They have a goal. Um, and it, it just makes for a lot less pressure because now if somebody is told something is $6,000 or $68,000, or six hundred and eighty thousand dollars. <laughs> if they're still standing there talking to you, then they can afford it. So uh, I thought it was a great, um, uh, you know, situation out there. It's a new. It's a good change. It's 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 something that I've never. I've been to a lot of shows. I know you've been to a lot of shows, and and I've, I've never, never seen, seen prices pricing printed. just listed yeah. on the machine. Yes. I've never seen it before. It's amazing. I love it. Yeah, <laughs> it, it was great. And and uh, the other thing we kind of saw, I thought it was interesting, is that. The base price and sometimes the added value of two more channels of color or something was only a difference of like three thousand to five thousand dollars. I mean, it's like it's that medium popcorn, large popcorn thing. It's like right. once you're on a medium, a uh, large is only twenty five cents more. You can't get your mind. Might as well it. do it. Yeah. Uh, for, two, for three thousand dollars, why wouldn't you open up? Yeah, I'm adding white ink and clear. Add more colors. Yes. Yeah, add more add more functionality. The more stuff that you can do with your equipment, the more opportunity you have to sell. Uh, and it's diversification, right? And even to your point earlier, the, the different, like there's garment here. I would like to see more of that sort of stuff. More offerings for, uh, for if you're a sign shop, to be able to, to, to have more channels of sales, right? The more you say no to your customer, the more you say no to your customer, the more likely they are to go to somebody else that's gonna say yes. And then if they ask that person for what you do, and that person says yes, then you just lost a customer. Mm -hmm. So the more you can offer your customers, the more diversification you have in your product offerings, the more customer retention you're gonna have. That's what I liked at the, the Roland booth, I think it was, they had some nice equipment, like it, but they had the, they were calling them desktop printers and stuff like that, that you could print the tchotchkes and the giveaways, stuff that you're probably buying from ASI or somebody like that, that now you could probably buy a piece of equipment for like five or six grand, that you could print your own and have your own branded uh, giveaways that you're going to take to a show, give to your customers, and you're not spending extra money 
on a bunch of different things you're actually main manufacturing in your shop and then that could actually turn into sales because people will eventually ask you you know where are you getting these so i'm like we print them so we can do this for you so that was kind of neat yeah excellent okay well we're gonna wind this down uh sir do you have any questions no. You are, thank you for attending. So yes, appreciate. thank you. Thank you. Um, anybody have any questions? It's a couple of people here. I didn't think usually we don't ask questions during the podcast. So, uh, <laughs> but just in case, I wanted I didn't want to be rude. Okay, final words, Will. And then, how can people get in touch with you if they're interested? Um, don't give out your email or your phone number. But, you know, <laughs> I'm looking forward to uh, seeing more of the show. Uh, thank you to ISA for, for having us and, and putting on this event and allowing us to record this podcast. I very much appreciate that. Uh, if you want to get in touch with me, you go to tampa.media, uh, or you can call 813 printer. That's, that's our, our phone number at tampaprinter.com. Uh, if you, if you want some advice on digital marketing, I have gorilla consultants, uh, and then, uh, sign parrot. We do installation and, uh, and wrap installation as well. So if you're looking for an installer in Central Florida and you're not in Central Florida, we can install it for you. Excellent. Thank you so much for joining us. And Ashley, you as well. Thank you so much for joining us. Jamie? Uh, one thing I'd like to end on, I think Ashley touched on it briefly, was the uh, display they had yesterday where they had a, a team of people, five different teams putting a sign together, which is kind of gave it like an HGTV atmosphere, like competition. It was really cool. Something I haven't seen it at a show before. So I thought that was really cool. They should do more of that. Uh, I know they do it for car wraps and stuff like that, but this was like a, a backlit sign and they had it's, to put all it together and make sure it worked, yeah. fabrication. So it was kind of cool. They had an hour to do it, um, really neat. And uh, I am Jamie McLennan from DMR Graphics. You can reach out to me on LinkedIn, find me there. And uh, DMR Graphics, dmr-graphics.com is our website. And uh, it was a pleasure. Thanks ISA for having us out here. Uh, like we said, we do the Printer Chat podcast usually monthly, and we've been doing it for uh, about five years now. So, Oh, my God. Yeah. Has it been that long? It's been at least. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Time flies when you're having fun. Um, again, thank you so much to the International Sign Association for inviting uh, me to participate with them uh, at the show and for inviting us to uh, do this podcast. This is one of my favorite organizations and my favorite events um, Lori Anderson, who's the president and CEO of the Sign Association, is probably very unassumingly walking around the trade show right now just talking to random people who don't even know that she's the president and CEO of the association. Um, they are community-oriented in a business success manner. Um, it's not so much as who's here as, as much as it is as Who's here that is going to help me with the future of my business? And they have a real um, big focus on bringing the community together for that. I mean, there is a big sign rotating next to us that says signs means business, and they mean business about that. So thank you, everybody, so much. A podcast from the Printiverse is the podcast that you can find us on anywhere you listen to podcasts. Or you could go to printmediacenter.com and uh, find it from there and also all the other work that I do for the industry. Until next time, print long and prosper.